Shamim is a is a very sensitive director. She's extremely interested in actors. She's a good director. She knows exactly what she wants. She knows how to ask for it. Shamim is very intellectual. She's very smart. She's very quick. She's witty. She's funny. She's bright. And when I read her script, I realized there's a lot of music. She's very musical. Shamim has been so open to everything, and um, she's been very supportive. She would always serve the character, and she was always very open to us as actors for suggestions. And I also think it's a great story. Her adaptation of it is terrific. As a novelist, and a screenwriter, and a film director, I get to tell stories in many different ways. Stories can be a window into our past, and they can also be a window into our future. Stories can also tell us a lot about the present, and I think that they can also speak to us about our personal evolution. I was born in England. My parents and grandparents were born in South Africa, but I'm of Indian heritage. And that Indian heritage played quite a large part in my household growing up. The expectation for me was that I would go to university and ideally become a doctor or a lawyer or a dentist, or failing that, that I would at least marry one. I was on a very well-meaning and very well-intentioned path until I stepped firmly off that path. In fact, I did get married. But where my family was South African and Indian, my partner's family were Palestinian. Where my family was Muslim, my partner's family was Catholic. So it felt to the people around us that actually we had very little in common. In fact, we had one major thing in common. We were both women, but that didn't seem to help anybody very much. <laughs> I had disrupted the expectations that everybody had placed on me. But with that disruption came choice and an opportunity to evolve. I think that we all have such an opportunity in our lives, perhaps more than we realize. It's what makes life so exciting, but it can also make life quite terrifying. And I think one of the ways we perhaps deal with that is returning to stories to help us through this process of growth and evolution. Stories can become a powerful roadmap to being human. Every film and every book has the potential to shine a light on a very particular aspect of our experience. But I didn't become a storyteller to create a roadmap or to write a human instruction manual. I write and direct because I want to express and explore. And one of the main themes that I like to explore is the fact that we have choices in life. And often these choices become greater when we choose to step outside the boundaries that society places on us, or when we choose not to listen to everything that everybody tells us might be correct. After I came out, I was inspired to explore the breaking of cultural boundaries in my first film, I Can't Think Straight. I was overwhelmed by the response to that film. We got hundreds of emails from all over the world, mostly from women, who told us that that movie had really inspired them to make a change. And in many cases, some of these women made quite drastic changes in their lives. Stories can do that. I began to see that stories are not just a window on our world uh, and an idea of our common humanness. At their very best, stories can tell us who we could be, if we dare, if we dare to challenge taboos, if we dare to challenge the status quo, and if we dare to really think at our core about who we are. Stories help us to identify the heroic journey. And by a heroic journey, I mean the journey that we all know, which is that really internally we can all be almost anything that we want to be. Somehow, it's easier for us to think about the heroic journey in terms of stories rather than in our everyday lives. Stories happen in a compact, finite amount of space. And within that space, we expect conflict and we expect contrast and characters that challenge us and sometimes characters who are heroic. Now, we all like to think of our heroes as being kind of superhuman, people who do extraordinary things in quite extraordinary circumstances. But I like to think that our personal lives are no less heroic every day when we choose to be true to ourselves and our passions, when we choose to remember 
that all of us make many different choices every day, small choices that can build our characters and as a result start to define our destinies. I had another such choice after I'd written my very first screenplay. It was a very delicate story of unrequited love and it was picked up quite quickly by a major Hollywood company. I got a call from Los Angeles to say that they had $15 million to make this film, but that I needed to add two love scenes and a nude scene. It was literally that specific. So I explained to them about the story, that it was about unrequited love, but they were adamant. Now, to most people that I spoke to, there wasn't much of a choice here. As a writer in film, you are expected to acquiesce to the requirements of a studio or of a financier. But it was my wife, Hanan, who told me, why is it that you're writing? Are you writing because you want to make a movie at any cost? Or are you writing because you have a story that you particularly want to tell? And so that opened up a choice in my mind. And the obvious choice was that we don't have to make movies in Hollywood, we can make them outside Hollywood. Well, that sounded great, but it really wasn't a viable alternative. Neither of us knew anything about the film industry. Neither of us had ever visited a film set, let alone directed or produced anything. We explored, and the more we explored, we found that actually the majority of people who try to make films never get their first film made. And of the people who make their first films, the vast majority never actually make their second films. It felt like an uphill task to learn the ropes in an industry where we didn't know anybody and where nobody knew us. On top of that, my passion was to write stories with strong lead female characters. And everybody that we met in the industry told us that strong lead female characters do not sell movies. We were also an all-female writer, director, producer team in an industry where even today, fewer than 7% of directors are women. On top of that, we were bringing up a small family. We had two small children at that point in London, and we had to find a way to live. So, what did we do? <laughs> there were a million reasons not to start down this path, and only one reason to start down this path. And that reason was to make the stories that we were passionate about. And in a strange way, the stories began to evolve as we began to evolve. After I Can't Think Straight, we made the world unseen. And this was inspired by my grandmother's stories of growing up in South Africa amongst the Indian community. But it became secondary in my mind to the story of a woman's awakening to her own independence. And with Despite the Falling Snow, I left behind my cult cultural background entirely to look at love and betrayal through the eyes of a female spy in Cold War Moscow. So was it worthwhile? Every time we start a movie, it's like climbing a mountain from the base and never knowing if you're actually going to make it to the top. Well, of course, at this point, I will tell you, yes, it's worthwhile. And we've been so fortunate to attract to us some amazing acting talent and creative talents of all kinds who helped uh, to be inspired by our movies as well. It's so much easier, so much easier when we're faced with difficult challenges to tell ourselves the story of why we shouldn't take the risk, because we might fail or because there's no alternative. But in fact, when we think about the stories that we remember the most, the books and the films that we remember the most, don't they all at their core tell us that there are choices even when we can't see them at a certain time? We are all of us told stories from the time we're very young. And now I'm not talking about bedtime stories. As the mother of two teenage boys, I'm acutely aware that I tell them my own stories about my perceptions of the world and the way I see the world working. And we pick that up from our parents, we pick it up from our wider communities, from the people around us, from our belief systems, sometimes from our religions. And there is maybe nothing wrong with that as a foundation. But it's so easy to fall into patterns of being and patterns of life that are unfulfilling or that are simply not ours because we don't understand our own power because you see, it's not just filmmakers and writers who can tell stories. I believe we all tell stories. We all tell stories all the time to ourselves about ourselves. And I think that the stories that we tell ourselves can make the difference between just getting through our lives every day or standing back and creating a life where we can really be, do, or have almost anything that we want. But we have to watch and listen to the stories that we tell ourselves. I believe that we are only limited by our imaginations. And as any writer will tell you, the imagination is limitless. And when our minds are open to a new idea, there's a little light there that nobody can extinguish. 
as a writer, as a director, I am so privileged to watch people laugh and watch people cry. The fate of characters that never existed, except inside my head. It feels like an immense power. But what I think we forget is that all of us have that power to some extent. The power to create our own destinies and the power to use stories, especially the stories that we tell ourselves, to create the life that we really want. Thank you.